When you hear the word oscillatory motion, what do you imagine? I think one example is the motion of a pendulum as shown in this screen. By the way, the motion of the pendulum that you learned in high school was a motion with constant amplitude. Let's see how a real pendulum moves by looking at this video in a high speed mode. You can see that the amplitude decreases as time goes by. This is due to the fact that the pendulum is not only subjected to gravity, but also to air resistance and other resistive forces. Another example of oscillating motion is that of a spring pendulum, which has a constant period and constant amplitude. However, the actual oscillation of a spring pendulum is also caused by the action of resistive forces, and decreases in amplitude with time due to the action of the resistive force. Let's try to make a spring pendulum oscillate in water. You can clearly see that the amplitude decreases while the weight vibrates. What about a more viscous liquid? Without vibrating, the weight moves slowly to the balance position. As you can see, there are different patterns of motion in the damped oscillation depending on the viscosity, or the magnitude of the resistive force. In this experiment, we will investigate a phenomenon called damped vibration. In high school, you learned about motions such as simple harmonic vibration. In actual vibratory motion, there is always damping. This time, Let's consider the case where there is a resistance force proportional to the velocity, and experiment with the phenomenon of damped vibration. We know that mechanical motion obeys the Newton's equations of motion. The Newton's equation of motion for a weight of mass, m, with a spring force acting on it and a resistance force proportional to its velocity looks like this. The Newton's equation of motion is a differential equation with time derivatives. By solving this differential equation, we can understand the damped vibration, and as we saw in the previous video, the pattern of motion changes when the resistance force changes. When the resistance force is small, the motion is called under damping, which means that it dampens while oscillating. When the resistance is high, the motion pattern becomes over damped, which is a monotonous damping motion. The motion pattern at the boundary is called critical damping. In this experiment, we will observe these three patterns. So far, we have been talking about mechanical motion, but the phenomenon of damped oscillation can also be observed in electric circuits. The electric circuit in which damped oscillations can be observed is a resonant circuit called an RLC circuit, which consists of a resistor, a coil, and a capacitor as shown in this figure. If we write a differential equation of Q, which is the charge stored in the capacitor, we get an equation like this. This differential equation contains time derivatives, just like the Newton's equation of motion, and if you compare it carefully, you will see that it has exactly the same form as the differential equation. Replace the charge Q with the position X. Replace the inductance of the coil, L, by the mass, M. Replace the C inverse by the M omega zero squared. And replace the electrical resistance, R, by the magnitude of the resistive force, 2 mK, and you have the Newton's equation of motion. From these equations, we can see that changing the magnitude of the resistive force, K, and changing the electrical resistance, R, have the same effect. In this experiment, the resistance R will be variable. By changing the resistance R, we can observe the waveforms of the three patterns of damped oscillation, underdamping, critical damping, and overdamping, and measure the voltage and period. We also estimate the magnitude of the inductance, L, of the coil from the measurement results. Here is the equipment used in the experiment. This is the oscillator, 
which produces the electrical signals that are input to the circuit. This is the oscilloscope. This is used to measure the voltage of the damped oscillation in the circuit. This is the terminal board with the elements used to make the RLC circuit. The circuit is built by connecting the terminals with lead cables. This is the lead cables. This is the conversion connector. It is used to connect oscillator and oscilloscope to lead cables. This is the tester. It is used to measure the resistance value. First, let's look at the oscillator signal with the oscilloscope. Connect the oscillator to the oscilloscope. Match the colors of the terminals of the conversion connector with the colors of the lead cables. Select a square wave from of the oscillator and observe the waveform on the oscilloscope. Press the function button of the oscillator and turn the dial to switch to square wave. A square wave is an electrical signal that moves back and forth between two voltages, and is characterized by rapid changes in voltage. In this experiment, the damped vibration waveform will appear here. The following is an explanation of the connection of the devices. First, let's look at the terminal board. There are capacitors in these parts. Each has a different capacitance. In this experiment, we will use this 330 picofarad capacitor. These are the coils, there are two of them. But we will use the one labeled 102. These are the resistors. The resistors are variable resistors. There are two resistors, one for rough adjustment and one for fine tuning, connected in series. These elements on the terminal board are not wired at first. It is necessary to connect the terminals of the elements to be used with lead cables. Now, let's wire them up. Connect the resistor and coil on the terminal board with lead cables. Connect the coil and the capacitor. Now, the resistor, coil, and capacitor are connected in series. Next. Let's connect the oscillator to the terminal board. From the red terminal of the oscillator's conversion connector, connect the red lead cable to the end of the resistor. Connect the black lead cable to the end of the capacitor. The terminals and leads are color-coded red and black, so make sure to match the colors. Similarly, connect the terminal board to the oscilloscope. From the oscilloscope, Connect the red lead cable to the middle of the coil and the capacitor. Connect the black lead to the end of the capacitor. The connection is now complete. Now let's take a look at the waveform from the terminal board. At first, set the variable resistor to a large value. From the oscillator, Output a square wave of about 5 kHz and 5 volts peak to peak, and observe it with the oscilloscope. If you look waveform through the terminal board, you will see that this part of the waveform has a different shape from the original square wave. When the resistance is high, you will see a waveform like this, which is overdamped. To see the damping part, zoom in on the time axis. To get an underdamped state, Decrease the value of the variable resistor. The vibration is now clearly observed, and underdamping has been achieved. This is the minimum resistance value. As you change the resistance, the pattern of vibration will change. Next, let's measure the underdamping. In the current state, the damping rate per cycle is small and the accuracy of the damping rate measurement will be poor. On the other hand, if we increase the damping rate too much, it will be difficult to know oscillation cycle, and the accuracy of the period measurement will be poor. While looking at the screen, adjust the attenuation rate so that it is suitable for the measurement of the attenuation rate and period. Once you have made some adjustments, 
increase the voltage of the oscillator to make the amplitude as large as possible. The next step is to adjust the vertical position. Once this is done, increase the time range. Adjust the vertical position so that the fully attenuated horizontal part is at the center of the vertical axis. Note that changing the voltage of the oscillator or the voltage range of the oscilloscope will change the position, so do not change the settings after this. To make the measurement easier, zoom in on the oscilloscope's time axis and adjust the horizontal position so that you can see about two cycles from the start of the vibration. Once you have successfully adjusted the oscilloscope, measure the period. The most accurate way is to measure the time interval of the cross points of the waveform and the center line of the vertical direction. At the same time, measure the voltage at several points of the maximum and minimum values. Since the logarithmic decay rate will be calculated from these measurements, the voltages should be measured accurately. Measure the resistance R with a tester. Disconnect the lead cables once. Be careful not to touch the knob of the variable resistor. The resistance of an RLC circuit is the sum of the resistances of the entire circuit. Oscillators also have internal resistors. In the oscillator used in this experiment, the internal resistance is 50 ohm. There is also a small resistance component in the coil. Since it will be needed for later calculations, let's measure it as well. As you increase the resistance, the amplitude will decrease and the vibration will become less noticeable. Eventually, the vibration will disappear and you will have critical damping. Fine-tune the resistance value to find the critical damping state, which is the border between underdamping and overdamping. Measure the value of the variable resistance at the time of critical damping. Don't forget to include the internal resistance of the oscillator and the resistance component of the coil in your calculations. After all the measurements are done, find the inductance of the coil in one of the following three ways. Find it from the period of underdamping. Find it from the logarithmic decay rate of the underdamping. Find it from the condition of critical damping. The three results should be the same but what about from your estimation? In your report, please summarize the following. Please read the text for more details.